Hi, in this video, I will give you a brief introduction on how we manage and organize footage for documentaries. It helps me to select the right footage, to communicate better with the director, to create a better idea and to make a better story. Feature films are usually organized into scenes, shots and takes, which is pretty solid for a feature film. Unlike this, most documentaries are shot over several months and the story is created during the edit. So the footage must be stored and organized wisely so that it helps the edit process. Organizing the footage starts at the location. Copy and backup raw footage. I create a new folder for my project. Let's say the return of some guy. Inside this folder, I create a new folder called footage raw. This is where I keep all the footage from every memory card every day after the shoot or in between the shoot if any of the memory card is full. I always use a format year, month and day for date because it automatically arranges the folder according to the date. I also keep the shoot day in the folder name. If the shoot is happening at multiple locations, I prefer to keep the location name in the folder name. I may also add the names of the key people in the folder name. If there were multiple cameras or sound recorders, I would keep a separate folder for each inside the date folder. If there were multiple memory cards used by the same camera or the recorder, I would create a new folder for each memory card. Usually, we assign a number to each memory card. It avoids any kind of confusion during the copying process. My next step is organizing the footage. This is usually done during a break or once the shoot is over. Inside my project folder, I create a new folder to organize my footage and I make a copy of all the raw footage in this folder. The purpose of this step is to keep only what is required for the edit. Different cameras use different folder structures. It's time consuming to go through each of these folders and to find the shot during the edit process. So I move all the footage scattered in these folders into the root folder of the memory card or the camera. In most cameras, doing this is pretty safe. But in some cameras, if I change the default folder structure, it can disrupt the link between the audio and video. I would always refer to the camera booklet before doing this step to see if they have specified any particular workflow for media management. Usually, if I come across a new camera, I would do a test shoot and test the workflow on the footage. My next step is I make sure that all the footage in the project have a unique name. It just simply means that no two files have the same file name. Having unique file name is really helpful when I need to search for a particular file or relink to the file if I move the footage or the project file into a new location. I just have to search for the file and the editing software will automatically find it for me. Many new cameras usually create unique file names. This is good enough if I'm not using the footage for multiple projects or archiving the footage for use later. From a human perspective, these names are not really meaningful. It will be a good idea to add some information about the project into these files so that it can be found out where the footage belongs to after archiving the footage. In some other older cameras, once I format the memory card, it resets the file name. So there is every good chance that there will be more than one file with the same file name. If I'm working on large projects, there's every good chance that the editing software can get confused between the files and link to a wrong file and mess up my edit. This happens often in proxy workflow. In Apple Macintosh, I use a finder to rename the files. I navigate to the directory. I select all the files, right click and select rename. I select format and select name format as name and index. In Microsoft Windows, I use a free software called Bulk Renaming Utility. I navigate to the directory. I select all the files. I select Fixed from the name group. I add the project name, shoot date, camera model code, DOP code and the memory card code into the new file name.
then i add a file number as a suffix once it's good i click rename if i want to keep the actual file name as a suffix instead of format i would select add text key in the details and select before name in finder in bulk renaming utility i select keep in the name group key in the details as prefix once it's good i click rename to rename the files i repeat these steps for every folder in my project this is my master footage now this is my preferred time to log the footage because the footage is organized and the file names are unique in case i need to make proxies i make proxies proxy is a low resolution copy of the actual footage which can be used to edit on a home computer or a laptop the proxy file should have a similar file name same aspect ratio same frame rate and the number of soundtracks as the actual clip once the edit is over i can link back to the actual footage and export for various purposes i will talk about proxy workflow in a different video if the sound was recorded on an external recorder or the sound was recorded on multiple cameras i need to sync the audio and visual there are various ways of doing this manually using the ears and eyes to match the waveform or automatically in the editing software itself these softwares can sync the audio and visual by comparing the waveform of the audio tracks or using time code when i have a large number of clips to be synchronized i use these features to sync them automatically time code is a more accurate method but for this i need a device which can supply the time code in the correct frame rate to the sound recorder and the camera my next step is sorting the footage this is required more from an edit perspective rather than a media management perspective when i want to make a sequence i prefer to see all the similar footage in one location rather than searching through all the daily folders it helps me to select the right footage for the edit sorting the footage is a very attentive process the criteria for the sort depends on the complexity of the edit and the quantity of footage for some projects i can sort it in a simple way but for some other projects i may have to sort deeper sometimes when i have to go really deep i have to keep a different folder for each micro action there are two methods to sort the footage if i have already synced the sound and the visual in the editing software the only option to sort is using bins in the editing software if the footage is not logged and i'm not planning to log it then i can sort it in the file system itself i also make sure that i do the sorting on a copy of the master footage in case i have already made proxies i prefer sorting the proxy because i can always link back to the actual footage after the edit I watch through each and every clip and sort it according to the content of the file. Sometimes I make notes about the footage which will help me during the edit process. By now I have a good understanding of all the footage in the project. This will help me to communicate better with the director and the collaborators to create a better idea and to make a better story. As an editor I watch through each and every clip in detail to understand it and I think it's very important. I also make sure that I keep all the files connected with the project organized into different folders. And I make sure that I make a backup of my master project every day before starting the edit. There is no strict rule about how you should organize your files, but you can use these as guidelines to create your own workflow convenient for you and for the project. Thanks for a great question. If you have more questions feel free to ask in the comment box and i will get back to you soon until then bye